Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Balaji and in this session I am not going to teach you anything new but instead I am going to show you one of the projects that I built over the past weeks. And the purpose of that project is to solve one of the common problems that we everybody face in our daily computer usage. And what is the problem? Mm, generally, we are, are good at polluting things, right? We are experts in pollution. But do we like pollution? We don't like pollution but we are experts in polluting things, right? Here I am not referring to air pollution or water pollution, but instead I am referring to polluting your local system. Um, polluting your local system in the sense I am referring to polluting a folder in your system. For example, consider your download directory. Usually, all of our download directory will be like a garbage. Um, usually, uh, we all download movies, we all download songs, we all download PDFs. So, as a whole, our download directory looks like a garbage. It contains files of mixed types which doesn't relate to each other. So, in this app that I built over the past few days, I added a feature to clean any of the folder that you pass. For example, if you pass your download directory to that particular app, means this app will clean that download directory for you. You don't want to manually clean your download directory, but instead it will do all those cleaning things. Cleaning in the sense what? What I am referring to? It simply means that moving files of corresponding types to its corresponding subdirectories. For example, um, movie should get moved to video directory, song should get moved to audio directory, um, spreadsheet should get moved to documents directory. And this app will do all those things for you. It looks really interesting, right? So let's open the app. So where can you find this app? I published this app in my GitHub repository. So, if you want to see this source code of the app or if you want to use this app, then you can go to my GitHub repository and you can download this app. Now, I will show you the link where you can find this. So, I will open my browser. My GitHub page is github.com slash sci That's my GitHub profile. Slash folder clear. That's the name of the app. So I'll just go to this link. I also attached this link in the video description. So if you want to take a look into my project, then check out the video description. There I attached this link. Or you can even manually enter this URL. Okay. Now in order to download this app, you need to click this clone or download and you can choose this download zip. But I'm not going to choose this download zip option, but instead I'll click this option. It will just copy this URL into my click. So I'll just click this and I'll open the command one CMD. I'll move to the directory where I want to clone this project. So I'll move to my F drive. I'll clear the screen. And here I'll type git clone and then I'll paste the copied URL. So this command won't work if you don't have git installed in your local machine. So in order for this command to work, first download the git. So once you download the git, you can use this command. I'll just present that. It will just clone this repository into my local system. Okay. Okay, that's it. It's done. So now I'll navigate into that folder cleaner directory. So see folder cleaner this folder. Folder cleaner. I think so. Yes. Now I'll open my Visual Studio code into this particular path. So I type code dot. So this is that project. In order to run this project, you need to have Python interpreter installed in your local machine. In order to download Python interpreter, you need to go to this URL python.org. So this is the URL from where you can download Python. Okay. In my case, I already have Python interpreter installed in my local machine. So I don't need to download it again. So I'll go to my VS Code. And in order to run this project, I'll go to my integrated terminal and then I'll type Python and the module that I need to run here. I need to run this app.py module. So I'll type app.py space within double quotes. I'll pause the folder that I need to clean. Here in my case, I need to clean this particular directory. So I'll just copy it back and I'll paste it here. Within double quotes, I'll paste this back and I'll press enter. Okay, it's current the directory and it moved few files, but it can't be able to move few files. For example, it can't move MSI file. It can't be able to move YAML file. So we need to give input for it. We need to give some folder back to it. Okay. So, but before that, I'll just take a look into that directory. See, 
it already moved few files still we have some files left so i will give input for that file too so i'll just press yes means i'll just press y press enter here it is asking me to give path for msi file that push to msi file it is asking me to give relating path so here i type programs or executors okay programs is fine or program that's okay now it is asking me to give path for yaml file huh. you can give path to this file type also but you can also do one another thing you can read this particular instruction press yes to skip your current input or press p or press enter for directly storing the file in its parent directory means pressing yes will skip this particular file uh, won't move this particular file for this current program run suppose if you want to permanently skip this file then you can press p or directly you can press enter so that's the thing so now i press enter so that only the msi file will get moved to program directory only this particular file gets moved to program directory this file gets skipped okay so now i'll just press enter okay yes means skip this input for the current run okay so i'll just press enter more files okay I'll just go see there's a directory name program and our msi file gets stored into this particular directory okay we are done now i again run this particular project see now also it is asking me to give back for yaml file so pressing s yes is just like a temporary solution if you don't want to give back or temporarily then you can press s yes. suppose if you don't want to give back for its lifetime then you can press p or you can directly press enter so i will just press y because i want to give some input to it okay so now it is asking me to give relative path for this yaml file now i can press p to permanently skip this file or i can directly press enter both the things p and directly pressing enter is same okay so i'll press enter that's it more files now i'll just check this particular data okay nothing changed now i'll run this project on second now it won't ask me the path for yaml file because we skip that file permanently okay see it doesn't ask me to give path for yaml file but still a yaml file is there in the parent directory only it doesn't move it to any other directory so all the inputs that you enter will get stored into this particular file user file types config so this is the file which contains all the information all the path that you gave to it so at the time of cleaning folder or moving a file it will give first priority to this json file that is it will give first priority to your input first priority in the sense is there any other json file also available here yes there is one default json here file types config json which i generated programmatically so this is the json see it contains all the possible file types with its corresponding category for example i will check for doc see it's of type document so whenever this app find a file with the type docx then it will create a directory with the name document and then it will move that file to this particular directory so this app works like this i got all these informations from one of the wikipedia pages what is the page oh, it is i'll just copy and then i'll go to my browser and here i paste that url i use this particular page i scrap all the data that are there in this page to generate that particular json logic for all those things web scrapping and storing it as a json are there in this particular package file format scrapper that inside this file format scrapper.py you can find all the code for scrapping that particular wikipedia page okay suppose if you want to generate this json once again then you want to run this json updater module this json updater module consumes the file format scrapper package to generate this json file for example consider i accidentally deleted this particular file this file is important but i deleted that file what to do mm, nothing to worry you just need to run this json updater module that's it so i'll type python json updater.py that's it but before actually running this particular module you need to note one thing this json updater module consumes this file format scrapper package that i used two third party packages like beautiful soup and request to scrap data from the web so you need to download those dependencies but how to download those dependencies 
In order to manage the dependencies of this project, I used one of the packages named pip env. Using that particular package, you can manage dependencies of any project. So I used that package in this project. So in order to use that pip env, you need to first install it. In order to install pip env, you need to type python m pip install pip env. That's a package that you need to install. Now presenter. In my case, I already have pip env, so I won't execute this command. Okay. But in your case, if you don't have this pip env, means just install it. Okay. And once you install pip env, you need to type pip env install. Okay. This will scan this particular file. Pip file. See. Here, this file contains details of all the packages that I consume. Okay. So these are the packages that I used. And this is the Python version that I used for building this particular project. So it will scan this file and it will install all the corresponding packages okay and once you install all the packages you need to activate your virtual environment you can do that by entering pip shell that's it once you enter this command pip env will activate the virtual environment that it created for you where you can find all your project differences installed i'll just quickly do all those things i'll first do pip env install to install those differences okay let's just pause this video and resume it once it installed that virtual environment okay I just pause it okay it set up the virtual environment now we need to activate this virtual environment but before that you can even check the path of your virtual environment by typing pip env hyphen hyphen b e n v it will show you the directory where all the project dependencies are stored okay so just go to that particular path see it contains all the details lib scripts okay python is here clip all the data are here see it contains all those details now in order to run this json updater you need to activate your virtual environment for that you need to use pip env space that's it my virtual environment get activated now you need to run python json updater I'll wait for it to finish. Okay, it's started generating JSON. Oh, yes, JSON generated successfully. See, the JSON file gets generated once again. Okay, so this is how this app works. But in order to run this particular module, you need to have active internet connection. Okay, but once you've downloaded this particular JSON, you can turn off your internet. Means this app can even work offline. Now, for any file type, you can give your own custom path, even though path for that particular file type is already there in this default JSON file. For example, consider PNG file. I'll just search for PNG. Yes, here it is, PNG. Where it is? It is there under raster graphics. Okay, where is this raster graphics? It is there under graphics. So, whenever this app encounters any PNG file, it will store that PNG file under this graphics slash raster graphics. So, I think in my folder I have PNG images. See graphics. Inside graphics, it has raster graphics. Inside the raster graphics, it has all the PNG files. So, suppose consider I need to set new path for storing this PNG. I don't want to use this default path. Then, what to do? At that time, you can use this user config updater dot py so i'll type python space user config updater dot py presenter now it is asking us to enter the file type that you need to configure i'll type png see it is showing the default path it's graphics slash raster graphics it is asking us whether you want to set a new path yes i need to set a new path want to set from default path and i'll reset path no i'm going to enter a new path so i'll press n now it is asking me to enter a relative path i'll enter images that's it now if i press enter means this particular directory will be used for storing images you can even nest multiple folders for example you can even enter images slash png means under images directory you need to have a directory named png for this particular directory, you need to store all your PNG images. But I don't want to do that. I'm okay with this images directory. I'll just press enter. That's it. Updated path. Now, if I check my user config JSON, see, there's an entry available here. 
and user settings has highest priority over the default setting so whenever our app encountered png file it will use this folder pack because it is there in our user config okay now i'll again run our app that way. but before that i'll restore this directory back to its original state okay i restored this particular directory with all the existing data okay so now i'll run my app that by again so python and that by presenter enter the directory that you need to play yes i will copy that directory and i'll paste it here see here i forget to pause this particular parameter as a command line parameter so it is asking me to enter a pack okay so you can pause pack even as a command line parameter or even as a input okay now i'll present that scan directory more files see now it doesn't ask us to enter the path for msi file and yaml file because we set those path in our user config JSON. now i'll go to the directory see yaml file as usual script but see instead of graphics we have images directory and there we have our png images that's it this is how this app works okay that was the project that i built over the past few days if you like my work that support this video and you can also share your comments about that project in the comment section and you can also start using that project in your daily life to clean any folder that you want and one thing if you find any bug in that project then let me know because this project is not 100 percent bug so if you found any bug then please let me know and then also raise an issue in my repository i already mentioned my repository url so Go to that URL and then raise an issue there. And you can even go one step beyond that. You can even fix that bug on your own and then you can raise a full request. Okay. You can also do that so that you will be also involved in enhancing this project. Okay. But before actually doing so, please let me know because since I am also using this project in my daily life, if I found the same issue that you found, then I will fix that bug soon and I will push it into my repository. So your work will get faced. Okay. So if you found any bug, just let me know. Okay. You, you need to raise an issue into my GitHub repository. And then if you want to fix that bug on your work, also mention it there so that we can prevent our redundant work for enhancing this project. And if you want to enhance this app by adding any new feature, also let me know through issues. Okay. Just raise an issue there so that we can discuss on that new feature and then we both can collaborate in real time to build that new feature okay i'm so interested to do that collaborative work with you okay and finally one last thing really guys one last thing i need input from you guys to develop any cool application okay just share any cool problem statement so that we both can discuss on that problem statement and we both can do it collaboratively okay don't worry even if there are a lot of solutions available for that problem we can build our own solution there's nothing wrong in it we can just verify all the solutions that are there and we both can collaboratively build our own solution for that problem okay because learning without applying is totally waste you can't be an expert in any technology just by learning you need to apply it so that only you can be an expert in that technology okay so just share your ideas about any problem statements so that we both can collaborate and we both can build a solution for that okay so meet you soon in one another video till then thank you and goodbye